Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I got the tractor out behind me. Just a moment ago, you almost saw me get it stuck on a hill. We'll talk about that in a second. A little bit brisk out here today, but it is still a beautiful morning. I think it's about negative five Celsius, negative seven Celsius. In just a minute, after I get those logs unloaded from that trailer uh, with my tractor, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the battens for my equipment shed. You guys would have seen that if you've been around the channel before. Uh, just talking about that hill and how I almost got stuck. What you saw there was me in two-wheel drive. You saw me in medium range and I was going up the hill and there were some roots underneath some really loose uh, chips, wood chips. And so I lost traction and when you lose traction obviously with lots of wheel spin that happens. So I shifted down to low, continued on. We got over that little uh, hiccup there. Probably should have been in four-wheel drive low but regardless we made it here. As I said, we're about to head in there, get that Woodland Mills fired up, make the rest of the battens. First off, let's get the logs, which I've just collected, out of the back of the trailer. They probably are frozen in there because they've been in there for a few days. But let's get them out of the trailer, push them onto the ground if possible, and then we'll pick them up with a grapple. I tend not to use the grapple to pick it directly out of the trailer because there's not a lot of room there. I don't have much feeling with that grapple, and if you guys can imagine, if I get in here and I think I'm hooked onto a log and I, I close up that grapple and it happens to be the side on the trailer, the tractor doesn't tell me and it just snaps it off. So I'll try to push this out and then we'll see how we make out. Glad you guys are here. Here we go.
Okay, well, there is all of the 111 battens I need to finish off the equipment shed. Next time around, we're going to be out there. I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach this. Because let's remember, most of this stuff is green, meaning it was freshly cut. And so, um, as was the boards on the equipment shed. And so I'm going to show you how I attach it to allow the wood to expand and contract and not crack. That conversation is for another time. Many of you are probably wondering, why on earth did I not put the trailer here when I was loading the battens over there the first time? Well, the fact of the matter was the trailer was being used for a bunch of other things and uh, I don't have a second trailer, so that's the reason. Now, if you guys just wanted to duck your head in here and have one more look at the sawmill, you would have seen me using a laser there. That's a relatively new addition to my sawmill setup. Uh, this laser, actually, I just started using this version recently because this version is rated for cold temperatures or at least colder temperatures than uh, my previous version. This version here, I think, is good down to negative 10 Celsius. And uh, I'll make sure to put the details about that in the description. Be sure to check out my other video where I put that in for the first time. You guys can see it there. On the top here, I have the power source, which you guys would have seen me operating with that switch. Just to make sure that that, uh, that setup continues working in the cold, I just take the batteries inside with me at the end of the day. And that way the batteries don't uh, die out on me here in the cold. Anyways, Woodland Mills did another good job here. I sort of come to expect that. I've been using that thing for years. Uh, I think next on the docket, as I said, is to get back to that equipment shed. Before we get there, though, let's uh, just talk briefly about this pile here. Some of you guys are probably going to remind me of that pile in the comments section. You're going to tell me, didn't you just scrape that out of that area there? This is basically sawdust from over there. And yeah, I did just scrape it out, but I forgot to move it. I got tied up doing other things after we got done filming and well, there it sits. One thing is for certain with the cold temperatures and the flurries here that is going to freeze into a solid rock real soon so i better get on it or that'll be there come springtime anyways one last thing this location this location where i have been taking the dust out of with the bucket on the tractor this location some of you guys mentioned uh, could be improved by removing some trees back here so i just push the dust all the way through and then i just circle around the building with the tractor i completely agree with you the trouble is, A, I can barely keep up with the chores I got, and B, I don't really want to tackle taking down this many trees all at once right now. It's not a matter of cutting the trees down. That takes me a few minutes. It's a matter of cutting them down and processing them. Taking the tops, doing something with them, bucking the logs to length, moving the logs. If you guys can imagine, there's a number of trees here I'd have to take out, probably a good 10 trees at least, and uh, I just don't have the time right now. Will it happen in the future? Potentially. Just not quite right now and one last thing this lumber shed some of you guys in my previous video mentioned that lumber shed is not really in the most optimal position because i have to walk across that boardwalk when it's in the down position in order to stack my lumber up some of you guys suggested i put the lumber shed right here and i did consider that when i was initially building that lumber shed but here's my thinking this tractor if we have a look at it it's pretty long, right? If you look at the back and you look at the front, throw some forks on there, imagine picking up lumber. That's a pretty long setup. If I have that trying to get into a lumber shed over here, I'm not gonna have a ton of room with those trees back there. I'm not gonna be able to pull the tractor and lift the lumber and back up too easily. And so at the time, I didn't want to take down a bunch of trees because I didn't have a use for them. In hindsight, I probably would have now that I built the equipment shed. But still, that was the reason I didn't cut those trees down at the time. That's the reason I built the equipment shed or the uh, lumber shed right there. Because if you look, we got a straight shot at it with the tractor forks. Come on in, pick up the lumber, back out, away we go. Anyways, just wanted to cover that just in case you guys were wondering my thinking on that. I am out here to make my life easier because I love cutting wood. I'm not out here to prove anything or make anything more challenging for myself. Maybe that equipment shed will end up over there one day, who knows? Maybe the whole setup here will be different one day, who knows? But for now, I've had a great day out here. Glad you guys came along with me. Make sure you come back next time. We're gonna be hammering those onto the equipment shed and then we'll call that project done. Guys, do me that big favor. Give her the old like a -roo. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.